Uh, hello fellow YouTubers. It's um, Monday, uh, June 11, and uh, it's been quite a lovely day today. Cool, but if you could get out, out of what little breeze there was and sit in the sun, it was, uh, it was very warm. So, I, um, I received a comment from uh, a lady whom I know, uh, mentioning that there was some confusion in her neck of the woods in the United States, and probably all over the United States, uh, about Australian gun laws. I, I sent back quite a lengthy reply to her, but I, had, I know other people in the United States who think the same thing, that, well, basically when firearms have been confiscated in Australia, you're not allowed, allowed to own any. Well, nothing could be further from the truth. So I'm going to go indoors, and I'm going to uh, give you an abridged version of the gun laws here in Australia. A lot of confusion, uh, not only in America, I think, but in the in the UK and Europe and probably all over the world. Yeah, there's probably is here right here in Australia too. But uh, oh, got my glasses. Uh, yes. So it, it all started this um, firearm regulations, the severe firearm regulations we have today, started in, uh, in 1996. However, before that, uh, firearms, you could go and buy a rifle uh, in a lot of different uh, stores here in Australia. Uh, Kmart used to sell them. The Kmart was set up in Australia, I think, in 1968. You could, they sold rifles and ammunition, like 22 rifle shotguns. Uh, they never sold handguns. Uh, and by the way, handguns have been illegal in Australia, if my memory serves me correct, since uh, 1936. But don't quote me on it. Uh, Walton's, which was a major department store here in Australia uh, for many, many years. Uh, Grace Brothers. In fact, I bought my first rifle at Grace Brothers uh, before decimal currency came in. That was 1966. So I bought it probably in 65. It was a Slavia 177 break action. And I think it cost me £4.10, shillings, which is equivalent $9 today. And I bought my second rifle, which was a semi-automatic uh, 22, a um, Javam, the French a Javam A3. They were the A3, the, uh, I think it was the A5 and the A6. Uh, the only the difference with them was basically I think the A6 or might have been the A7 I'm not sure had uh, a firing pin and extractor system. Uh, mine the A3 uh, just had the breech block. It fired from an open breech, and uh, once you pulled the trigger, it went forward. It took a, a cartridge out of the magazine into the chamber, fired in the gases, sent the breech block back again. A, a, a lot of military weapons were uh, simple blowbacks, and I think they still are. Just a simple blowback operations, uh, regardless of the design. So, but then how I've uh, I've digressed. I? I, I'm I'm saying too much. So yeah, so you could buy uh, rifles and um, and ammunition at quite a few stores in in, in Australia. In fact, um, I bought my Javam from a, a sporting store called Mick Simmons. I don't think Mick Simmons is in operation anymore, but at that time it was. And at the time we were living, I was living with my parents in uh, the suburb of Mays Hill, which was just west of Parramatta, and Parramatta itself is uh, something like 25k uh, west of Sydney. And Mick Simmons was in the Main Street, Church Street of Parramatta. I also bought my, I think I bought the Javam in decimal currency, I think it was 1966 or 67, it was, I think it was 20, 27 pound, which is $54. And, uh, I bought my second rifle from um, Mick Simmons also, it was my current uh, 243, uh, and it was 47 pound 10 shillings, so it was $95 equivalent today, although you wouldn't get it for $95 today. And the funny thing was, when I, I had both those rifles on lay-by, but I, I don't remember how I bought the, the, the Javam home, it may have been in a box, because it was, a, it was easy to take down. Uh, uh, the, the 243, it, it was an English rifle. The church you built on the Mauser action, and when I finished paying it off, it, they handed it to me over the counter, and I walked out of uh, Mick Simmons 
with the rifle tucked on the mound, the muzzle pointing down, and I walked all the way back to work. And no one gave me a second look. And that was probably in 1967. No one gave me a look. But that's the way it was then. Now, things are totally different. In 1996, uh, Martin Bride massacred 35 people at Port Arthur. It was in April. I think April 28, 29th it was. And he wounded 23. And uh, the then Prime Minister John Howard, who was abhorred, but I think we all were. We were absolutely all horrified of what this, this psychopath had done. But the new gun laws were brought in because of that. And in that same year, um, oh, I'm, 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 I'm getting a little bit ahead here. I must, I must remind you that, that my Javan was a semi-auto. And semi-automatics were, were easily available. They were legal in those days, as were semi-automatic shotguns and rifles. And, uh, of course, pump-action shotguns and rifles and that. So, this Martin Bryant used some, I think he used an AR-15 um, to, uh, to kill all those people. Or an assault-type rifle of, of that kind, anyhow. And it was then that the, the government, in all its wisdom, they pointed the finger at us, all us firearm and especially the, um, the news teams and the, the news station and papers, that we were all are guilty by uh, mere association, and that is that we had blood on our hands by mere association, all us firearm owners. That's what people thought. And there was an outcry, ban this, ban that. Well, the government did. In that same year of 1996, the government banned uh, pump-action shotguns, uh, semi-automatic firearms with a 22 or center fire, and military weapons. Um, and they instigated the National Gun Buyback, and uh, you'll probably find on records, I, I've included a link uh, to go to Wikipedia that you can read all about it there. It, um, it probably stated $500 million was spent on the buyback, but it's something was like more $700 million at the time to buy back what were once, before the incident in 1996 with Martin Bryant, were legal firearms that suddenly became deemed illegal all but overnight. So, uh, my Javan became illegal, and, and all my, and my pump action shotgun became illegal, and uh, so there was something like 700,000 firearms handed and bought back. I mean, the money, the restitution uh, was good. I mean, they, they paid uh, more than fair prices for the firearms. Right? We, we could have stowed them away and, and just, you know, taken the chance that we'd never be found out. But you know, I think the greater majority of people like myself did the right thing. We said, well, okay, here you go. And they paid us for them. The fire, and of course, they were, they were destroyed. And they seemed to take great pleasure in showing that on, on the news too. All these truckloads of beautiful firearms just being dumped and cut up to pieces. Uh, anyhow, so then came the, the shooter's license. You had to have a shooter's license in order to own your firearms and you also had to have all your firearms registered. That is the serial number of each firearm you had had to go into a registry. And that's the way it is today. Uh, initially, the police were coming out and in, in, uh, investigating or uh, checking up on your storage facility. You had to have your firearms stored separately from your ammunition. It had to be in locked safes. And they would do that. But also to make sure that you hadn't illegally sold one of your uh, registered firearms. Because if you did that, well, the, you, you know what would hit the fan. And if you were stupid enough to do it, you deserved it. But that hasn't happened here for a while. It's been quite a few years since the police... Uh, here in my hometown came a knocking because you know there's 70 odd thousand people in my hometown and there's a there'd be thousands of firearm owners so it's a big job and I think the police would rather be doing other things so that is basically the situation here in Australia the your shooter's license has uh, uh, five categories it has category A which is for now I'll just have to read these just to make sure which are for um, a rim fire and um, not semi-auto, semi-automatic, and shotguns, not semi-automatic, uh, like under and over, that sort of thing, and um, air rifles and paintball guns. Now, category B is for uh, all center fire, including uh, a pump action and lever action uh, rifles, not shotguns, but, and not semi-automatic, and muzzle loaders. Uh, category D is for all self-loading semi-fire, center fire rifles, pump action, semi-auto rim fires with uh, capacity of more than 10 rounds. They're only available to primary producers, as is uh, 
um, uh, category C, a D. I get confused here. Yes, uh, category C is pump action, self-loading, shotgun, semi-automatic rifle, but they're only available to a select few. I can't get one because I'm not a primary producer, I'm not a professional shooter, I don't work on a farm. Well, that's a little bit erroneous, isn't it? I mean, just because you work on a farm, you can actually get a category D and buy yourself a, a pump action shotgun and, and a semi-automatic uh, uh, rifle, then fires and so on and so, or go to category D too, because it's the same thing. It's for primary producers and uh, those who can work on farms. Um, category H is for handguns. Well, hang, they're only available if you're a member of a pistol club. You have to be a, a member of a pistol club for six months and you can only use a, another member's handgun until you're entitled to, uh, to acquire your own. You have to have a special license and that usually the handgun is stored at the armory. I think it's two years before you can actually store yours at home in a proper safe, uh, but you certainly can't carry it. You, you, to, to get a license to carry a, a handgun in Australia is all but impossible. Unless you're a security officer, bona fide security officer, of course, police officer, of course. Now, a category R and E, well, that is strict restricted firearms. You know, this is strictly for military, uh, which includes machine guns and uh, rocket launchers and full auto weapons and that sort of thing. So, uh, people like me, uh, you just can't get them. You might be able to pick one up illegally. In fact, you can pick up uh, handguns illegally. It's just a matter of who you know. But is it worth the risk? There are severe jail terms for those who get caught with illegal weapons. Um, now, the shooter's license, uh, um, to, to register your, your firearm doesn't cost anything at all. That, that's free of charge. Your shooter's license, you've got to be in your own mind every five years. I just had a notification recently. Uh, I mean, of course, I'm on a pension. It doesn't cost me anything at all. I don't know what it costs uh, uh, working, working folk, uh, those who are not pensioners. But yes... And you have to have a shooter's license to have your firearms, of course, but also to buy ammunition and reloading components and to buy a firearm. You must have a shooter's license first. If you don't own any firearms and you want to buy a firearm, you have to have a shooter's license first. Then you have to get a, a, a permission to purchase, a permit to purchase, but you have to have a good reason. It's not just, I just want to have one. No, that's not good enough. And uh, you have to either know a primary producer who will let you go hunting on their property or you want to do target shooting, but if you just want to do target shooting, that's all you can use it for, which means you can join the Sporting Shooters Association of Australia and go down to the nearest rifle range and do some target shooting, but you've got to do it at least uh, half a dozen times a year, I think, in order to uh, maintain your, your shooter's license and to maintain ownership of the firearm. Uh, you, can't, uh, you can't buy ammunition uh, online. It, it, it's illegal to post ammunition here in Australia through the post or courier. Uh, if you buy a firearm, it has to be sent to the nearest uh, gun shop in your area. Uh, we, we do have sort of a gun shop here in Coffs, but we don't have a gun shop proper. The nearest one is at Armadale, and that's about 200k uh, west of here. We have a, a disposal store who, who sell firearms, yes. They're licensed to sell firearms and ammunition, but they sell them at overinflated prices, and I wouldn't buy anything there anyhow. So if I wanted to get another rifle, a particular rifle, which I don't, I would have to uh, get it sent to Armadale. Then I'd have to go there, have a 400 kilometre round trip to pick it up. That's the way. That's the way it is here in Australia. So that's basically it. That is basically what it's like here in Australia. Well, that's about it. I want to thank you for watching. If you've got any questions, please, any questions about the firearms and what it's like here in Australia, let me know. But you know, it's all basically all good. It's basically all good. I own a dozen firearms. They're all registered. I have my shooter's license. Uh, no problem. And uh, it's not doom and gloom. Far from in fact here in Australia. So there you are. That is letting you know the, what this situation is like. In a, basically in a nutshell. I know it's a big nutshell. A huge one. Bigger than the coconut shell. But I just thought I'd let you know. So thank you for watching. And until next time, bye for now. Now, what is it? That's a quarter to six. News will be on in 15 minutes. <sighs> Toodles. Au revoir. Adieu.
so long. Adios. Ciao.